Welcome to this lockdown edition of Real Talk about real estate with Peter and Nicole. Hey everyone, with that today we talk about some of the forecasts for 2021 and a little bit about how buyers and sellers are making it work in this market. CREA, which is the Canadian Real Estate Association, recently put out their predictions that 2021 is likely to look a lot like 2020 did uh, for the second half of that year. Yeah, on average last year, house prices rose 17.1% compared to 2019. And the forecast for this year is a 16.3% increase for 2021. So uh, touching on price increases, um, there seems to be a camp of people who are reluctant to search for a house right now, not only because of the level of competition, but also um, because of this notion that Prices have risen by a large number in a relatively short amount of time, so surely there must be some sort of correction looming. What say you, Peter, about that? Correction, correction, correction. I keep hearing it all over the place, yet I have yet to see one happen. If you pull up this graph um, showing the average price increase, the two biggest corrections, we can call them that, um, were in 2008 and 2017. And ironically, the one in 2017 was the bigger of the two. But, you know, I didn't really feel any hints of a correction in 2017. And it it just rose significantly past that, that nobody really even talked about it. So in my eyes, I don't see any signs of a correction because interest rates are still low. And remember, immigration has been halted so long, there's a backlog of people that drive the real estate prices up. That's my two cents, but to be honest, we only have so much information and it's impossible to forecast something like that. Yeah, yeah, the crystal ball and all that. Um, but I too would uh, have a hard time seeing a correction coming in this scenario. Um, even if there is a correction, let's say hypothetically speaking, history has shown us that uh, prices bounce back uh, to the uh, you know trajectory that they were on fairly quickly a year two years three years at the most um, so exactly I think most people who bought houses in 2020 and who are going to buy houses in 2020 one aren't going to turn around and sell them again in a year so even if there were a correction again hypothetically um, I I don't you know I don't see people being impacted or being underwater or anything along those lines yeah, as long as you're not day trading in the housing market and you're doing what everybody else does, buy a home, stay in a few years, uh, that seemed to be okay for almost every single person who's bought a house in the last 15 years, 20 years. Righto. All right, shifting gears here. Let's do some fact or fiction. Peter, now is a great time to be a seller. It's a great time to be a seller. Uh, that's fact. If you have a house that has some sort of a limiting factor, like you're near a train track, you're on a busy corner, or uh, you have a, a strange layout that only works for you, this is a fantastic time to put your house on the market and, and get top dollar for it because those limiting factors, their importance is diminished by this crazy demand of buyers, uh, you know, 10, 20 buyers for each property. Uh, you also have much more control of your closing date. Uh, you don't have to have your house on the market for weeks. The prices are astonishing. Uh, but I, I can't think of a better time that I've ever seen since I've been in real estate. Agreed. Yeah, why not now? Uh, and then, Nicole, I've got a fact or fiction for you. People should wait for all this mayhem and bidding wars and competition to slow down before they go into the market. Fiction, hands down. Um... If it was me, I would not be waiting. Um, you know, touching on the, the seller aspect, people think because it's a good time to be a seller, it must mean it's a bad time to be a buyer. I think the level of competition right now is um, a great indicator of the fact that it's a very good time to be a buyer. Interest rates are at historic lows. That means greater purchasing power. Um, so I think what... What's important to accept is that buying a house right now looks a lot different than it did a year ago. Competition is almost, um, you know, a certainty on a lot of properties anyways. Um, 
But just because there's competition, you know, doesn't mean you're going to do something you regret. Um, that's a big part of our job is to make sure you don't do anything that you exactly. would regret down yeah. the line, whether that's price uh, or other other reasons. So, um, and just because there's competition doesn't mean you won't get that house. There has to be a winner. So why not? Why not you? I think exactly. There's one winner for every competition. Yeah, and I think. I think what people would regret more is waiting two, three, five years um, for this, you know, to calm down. Um, and then by that time, who knows what prices are going to be and, you know, what the, what the landscape is looking like. So, yes, I think what's important is to remember or to accept that there's going to be competition. Um, it's okay to be disappointed if you don't get a house, but you must not be defeated. You just keep trying and have faith that um, whatever house is meant to be um, will be the one that you get. And, um, you know, battle it out because it is a very good time to be a buyer and I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be waiting um, for less competition. I would just be doing what I can to um, to get that house. Exactly, there's still houses out there and there's still moves to be made. I was looking at um, what has sold over market price this morning and 70% uh, of houses in Hamilton have sold over asking, which is a big number, but the other side of that coin is 30% of houses didn't sell for the over asking. Uh, same thing in Burlington, 50% of houses sold for over asking price, uh, plus or minus, but another 50% of houses sold for asking or less and in Waterdown that number is about 75% so there's still 25% of houses in Waterdown that sold for under asking. Uh, so it's not impossible and sitting by the wayside it's just costing 5, 10, 25,000 a month depending on what market you're looking into. Very good point. I think that touches on perspective, glass half full and all that. Um, yeah, stay positive and um all that good stuff. I know it's easier said than done sometimes, yeah. but it's uh, pers perspective changes everything. Exactly. And we're still bringing buyers to properties and getting the offers accepted. As daunting as that may feel, uh, it still happens. And the only way to do it is to just keep cracking away at it. Anyway, uh, I think that's a wrap for today's Real Talk. And remember, winners never quit and quitters never win. <laughs> Have a good one, everyone. Thank you.